Next job in the build is the axle boxes. It's probably worth running through the axle boxes in a bit more detail than I did with the horn blocks. So what I've got here is two lumps of cast iron, big enough for a full set of axle boxes, so six. The first thing I need to do is clean up the surfaces and square up the external faces. So to that effect, I put one in the machine vise here with the cleanest face, this face here, against the back of the vise. On the other side, I've got a bit of bar because that face is particularly lumpy and I don't want the two fighting each other effectively in the clamp. I have got a parallel stuck underneath just to raise it up a little bit. And I've got a big chunky end mill in the machine, which I now use to clean up this top surface. Now I've cleaned up the first face, it's a simple case of just swapping it around. Other way up, back in the machine vise, and again a bit of bar on the back side. Lovely as it is to machine, cast iron doesn't have to make a mess. It leaves a fine dust everywhere, so I do clean up quite often. I've now got two good sides and I can now put it back in the vise and clean up this lumpy side here, the base I guess from when it was cast. I shouldn't need the round bar now because my two faces should be flat and parallel. Let's give a quick check. 35.78. No, actually it's pretty damn good. 35.82. Bearing in mind of course I'm using verniers. I've already taken a couple of big chunky cuts off this face. This will be a finished cut on this side and this face will ultimately be the outside face of the axle boxes when they're fitted. So we've just got one more cut to do down the middle and it's quite a light cut. Whilst I've got it held here, I'll just drop the end mill down and clean up both the ends. With five of the faces cleaned up, it's decision time. And after some thought, what I've decided to do is to carry on with the milling operations and bring the cast iron block down to the widths of the axle box, so inside to outside. This is the inside here, and that's the outside there. So I'm looking for a thickness of 19.7 millimeters, which is a lot of material to take off because I'm still at 24 and a half, nearly 25. So a good five mil needs to come off. That is just more of the same in the milling machine, so I'm not gonna show that. After a bit more time in the milling machine, I've actually taken both of these blocks down to two of my final dimensions. So between the rough surface and the other side, that is now the thickness, so inside to outside of each axle box. And the other dimension I've machined to is the heights of the axle boxes, so top to bottom. Now I'll go and cut the blocks into the individual axle boxes and square them off with an end mill. The key dimensions I need to be worried about for the axle boxes are going to be first, the bore hole for the axle. That needs to be a, a good fit with a little bit of play, it can't be too tight. Secondly, I need to be concerned about the width of the axle box, the faces that sit between the horns. Again, it needs to be a good fit with a little bit of play so that the axle boxes don't lock up. And the third one is to ensure that the axle runs dead centre through the axle box in terms of the faces that sit up against the horns top to bottom is not quite so critical. My approach to achieve that is to first centre drill each of the horn blocks. Thank you. 
got the axle box in the four jaw against the top and the bottom faces of the axle box I've got a bit of brass because they're my finished faces I don't want those marked for the left and right faces as we're looking at it um, I've got the jaws straight onto the axle box I'm not worried about these because these are going to be machined further later on to get the axle box centered in the four jaw I'm using the floating dead center method so I've got a dead center in the tailstock and another dead center between the center in the tailstock and the center hole that's drilled in the axle box. And as we can see, I've got a dial gauge up against the end of the dead center that's floating. I've already done the adjustment. And I'm pretty pleased. There we are. I've got a total variation of just over 0.01 millimeters. I've run a series of drills now just to open this up to as close to 16 as I can get. I think I've got a 15 mil drill, so we'll take it that far. I'm getting close, 15.96 according to the verniers. Not the best for measuring inside diameters. I've turned a little go, no go gauge, which has some very subtle steps on it. So according to the mic, that step is actually bang on 16. This is my 16 mil silver steel bar. And it quite literally fits but that is too snug I need a very very slight overball I think that's good enough to go. At this point it makes sense for me to turn up the axles. That should be a relatively simple turning exercise. So I'll get on and do that now and then we'll come back and finish off these axle boxes. Concentricity between the wheels and the axles is really quite important. Although I'm using my collar chuck it's worth a quick check just to see how true it's running and getting plus or minus 0.01 millimeters is fine. I wouldn't be able to get any better than that on the four jaw. After cutting three lengths of 16 mil silver steel bar, the first job was to face off one end and then both face off and cut to length at the other end. On the end of each axle I need to turn down the shoulder, 14mm diameter, for a length of 16mm. I've touched off on the face and I've reset my indicator on the lathe bed. So I'll now move the carriage forward by 16mm and put my stop in place. It's crude, but it is effective. Thirteen point nine nine four point zero zero six mil out. 
The last operation on the axles is to cut a recess in the shoulder. The 14mm shoulder will align to the 14mm holes I'll be boring in the wheels. As I'm going to be loctiting the axles to the wheels, there needs to be space for the compound. And to get that space, I'm actually going to cut a recess from round about 2.5mm in from the end and 2.5mm out from the other end of the shoulder. And I'll make that about 0.1mm deep. A quick run through the setup, I've got a square collet holder held in the machine vise and I've got a bit of bar which I've turned down to 16mm. This will allow me to slide on one of the axle boxes and then clamp it in place. First I use a square to get the axle box in the right position. It may be a little bit over the top but I also add a back plate to give the axle box a bit more support. With this setup, I take a light cut on the top surface using the end mill. I then remove the collet chuck, rotate it 380 degrees and refit it back in the machine vise and take the same cut on the other side. With this approach, I can now be confident that both these faces are equally distant from the axle center line. 29.6, 1.6 to come off. So that's a 0 0.8 on either side. The 28mm is the dimension I'm looking for on the flange across the outside of the axle boxes. So I carry on in the same fashion. We take 0.8mm off this side and then rotate the whole lot again 380 degrees and take the same depth to cut on the other side. With the flanges out of the way I carry on in the same vein but now I'm machining the dimension that sits between the horn blocks and of course leaving the flange at the back end of the block as we're viewing it here. I bring the cut down to just over half the width of the gap between the horn blocks before rotating the part and doing the same on the other side. I've done the final cut on the other side, so this should be it. Let's try it for a fit. I'm not looking for anything too tight. I do want a little bit of give, otherwise it's liable to lock up. You can see the axle box there. Yep, a little bit of rock in there, which is good, because I'm going to need that. Out of interest. I've been working specifically to that horn block. Yeah, look at that, he's slightly tighter in this one. Still a little bit of rock, but slightly less. I'm really pleased with that. I think that is just what I'm after. Right, another six to do. We're into home straight on these axle boxes now. Just a couple more features need to be machined in each one. I need to do the oil recess at the top and drill the oil passageway down through. And then on the bottom, I do need to drill and tap the holes for the spring pins. After using the edge finder to establish the center of the axle box, I started off with a four mil slot drill. But I soon realized that this was gonna take me forever. So I swapped out the four mil slot drill for a 12 mil slot drill recentered the workpiece under the quill and went straight down to the depth of the recess. With that done I put the 4mm slot drill back in and cleaned up the outline.
After centre drilling it was a little nerve-wracking drilling neural passages. Using such a small drill, 1mm diameter, in such a large machine is not conducive to good feedback. But I managed all six without any breakages. Okay, I'm pretty much done. I have not yet drilled and tapped the holes for the spring pins. I'll do that later after I've made the horn stays so I can actually spot through. Otherwise everything else is done for all three axles and all six axle boxes. I've machined everything with I think suitable play so that it won't lock up when I put it all together and especially once the coupling rods go on so it doesn't bind up and it's been an interesting exercise. One point to note is that each of the axle boxes I've made specific to its location and I've numbered each with some little stamps on the bottom. We can see five little centre punch stamps there. That indicates this is axle box number five, starting front left as number one, working way backwards. Thanks for watching.